Whoa, we're live. Pre-game show, getting started. Lineups, just announced. Jake, should be filtering in soon. And that's about that. Let's see if the Nationals lineup is out. What's going on? It's time. You're not Jake. You're not Jake. Where's Jake gonna do the pregame show? Do, 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 do. Nationals lineup. How in Tarantino is Loazaga starting before Gumby or Hap? I mean, it's not a full, it's not a full start, but it's an opener. Um. All right, Jake. Guy lost his house. That's a bummer. Got the Nationals lineup too. Did I miss? Oh, wait, hold on. Four people requesting to join. Is one of them Jake? No. Is Corbin starting for the Nats today? Yes, he is. One person requesting to join. Talking Jake. Bam. Waiting for talking, Jake connecting. There he is. Hello. It's the Yankees pregame show. Can I go sideways? Does that work? No. No, it doesn't go. It doesn't work, Jake. It's a vertical thing. The vertical thing only. We got both lineups. Last second lineup announcement. And uh, I'll just give the Yankees lineup, Jake. Are you ready? Okay, okay yeah. DJ LeMay, who's back in there, is leading off. He looked pretty good yesterday. Judge in right field, batting second. Glaber playing short, batting third. Stanton, two home runs in two games, DHing. Voigt in the five hole at first. Gio Urshela moves all the way up to the six hole. And Duha in left field. How about that? Uh, and then Higgy gets the day game after the night game for Gary. And Talkman replaces Hicks in center field. Johnny Loizaga is the opener, and that's that. That's that. That's that. Yeah, it's uh, – I don't know. I think Higgy was expected night, day game after night game. Talkman makes a lot of sense with the lefty on the mound. He was going to be out there in some fashion. And then, yeah, I think with the Yankees outfielders having been nicked up, whether it's Stanton – not being ready to play the outfield yet, Judge healing from his rib and Hicks coming off Tommy John. The Yankees had the luxury of kind of <laughs> whoever looked worse they could sit in today's game. So uh, Hicks. Oh, I lost your audio. You got me? Gotcha. You meant um, Andujar makes sense with the lefty on the mound. No, I meant Talkman. Talkman's great versus lefty. He's okay. got better splits. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're gonna so you're gonna bench Guardy either way against yeah. the lefty, and then out of Hicks, Stanton, Judge, you're gonna bench basically one of them because <laughs> those three guys are coming off injury. So I'm glad they didn't bench Stan. They keep him DHing because he's hot, and Judge is Judge. So um, you know they're gonna have to sneak him an off day at some point, but um, makes makes more sense to try to get this dub and take Hicks out than Judge. I'm getting so sick of the Andujar, or of the Clint crowd, Jake. Good. I not understand. He's the sixth best outfielder on the team. Yeah. And how does, does the Clint crowd not understand that Judge, Stanton, Hicks, Andujar, Talkman, and yes, Gardner, because of his defense, is better player, starting player than Clint. How do they not understand? He's seventh. The Yankees send him to the satellite camp. Clint can hit the hell out of the ball. But the Yankees have seven, six guys that are better. I don't understand the Clint crowd. They just sh don't shut up ever. Get it through your head. Yeah. Get, I, get it, I like mean, it, it, if you haven't accepted at this point, you're still yelling. Like, read a book. It's it's a 30-man roster, and he was the first guy to go. Um, I tried and, to trade him last year, and no one wanted him. We have that from firsthand sources, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, this leads into a longer discussion. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean give up on Clint Frazier's career. I mean, you're seeing the, the national audience yesterday. I mean, the Cespedes guys and uh, other people have been saying what I'm saying. Like, get this guy 
on an organization where he can play because he is super talented. And, you know, I think someone could make an outfield, you know, Clint versus Andujar argument, especially if Andujar has a rough day today. So um, sure. that, that's it, it, exactly. So it's, it is what it is. I mean, Andujar is, has proven more at the big league level hitting wise in spring training. He's looked more solid than Clint defensively in left field. Let's see it in a regular season game. Let's see it. Uh, I mean, he's on the satellite camp, which is true, because, like, even as a pinch hitter, you're not going to pinch hit Clint over Ford. Right. So just – he doesn't really have a spot. that He needs to get traded. They just don't want to trade him for nothing, which is what they were offered. Because no team is going to be like, hey, you know that guy that's seventh on your depth chart and doesn't really play the outfield that well and has demanded to be traded? We're going to give you a haul for him. The ticking time bomb. It's when does when does Clint's service time get up against the wall where they they can't send him down, and or when do the Yankees get a, a decent offer for him or need something need something else in their lineup? So yeah, they're they're in no rush. Um, Clint Frazier and his fans are, and I I get it because I I do think you know we did this on Talking Baseball hashtag ad go check it out uh, especially tomorrow, but you know I think if Clint Frazier was on a, a Texas or some of the weaker lineups, he could be in the middle of them very easily. I agree with that. But he's on the potential world champion Yankees, and right now he's buried. It's just – yeah, and I'm sorry I had to go on this rant. I was just that even on here. It's okay. Was, uh, Clint, what about Clint's like, get it through your fucking heads, guys. Let it out. Like, figure it out. Read the tea leaves one time for me. Anyway, this lineup is expected, and it's still not bad, man. I mean – No, it's good. Or, they looked bad yesterday. Um, that's going to happen. It's, a, it's baseball. That's why it's a crazy, fun sport, because literally anything can happen. But they could come out today and dominate, or they could look bad again, and I'm still not going to be overly concerned. I do I, – I still want it on record. I don't like that we scheduled in this opener game when we have Hap and Monty as two full starters. I understand what they're trying to do with, like, getting the rotation good for the Boston series and stuff like that, but – it, especially when Paxton goes one inning, it, it's still like this better not blow up on their faces because it was weird that they scheduled an opener day when they have two starters ready to go. Yeah, it's the uh, I mean, you can't predict baseball, Susan. Uh, John's been telling us that for years, and that's kind of what you do when you do opener funny business third game of the season. But the Yankees also planned for that, and they plan to do 30-man funny business like we talked about. And that's why they sent Clint and Heller down after game two, and they brought up Kriske and Nelson because they've got them on the same page, and it's just more bullets for them to use. But and so, Probably in like two days. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, if, if they doubled down on Holder today, if whether, you know, blowout or either way or something like that, I think you could see Holder go down for Clint and, hey, meet us in Philly. Like, they are going to abuse this 30-man roster for the first two weeks that they can. Yep, I agree. All right, the Nationals lineup is Trey Turner, Adam Eaton, Starling Castro, Howie Kendrick, Eric Thames, Ask Krebs, Robles, Jan Gomes, Michael A. Taylor, and Patrick Corbin on the bump. Again, like – what they did to Paxton is what this lineup does. Like, eventually they pop some homers, but how they got Paxton was they just didn't strike out and they hit singles. Like, a lot of those early hits on Paxton were kind of, you know, somewhere like five, five hoppers, uh, uh, balls with eyes. But that's what this lineup will do. They're not going to. Yeah, and I think, I think Paxton yesterday was Paxton's biggest problem. I, I think for the Nats lineup, they – they give you professional at bats, is what you're saying. But the other thing is, man, Ass Crabs and Howie Kendrick, like everyone knows them. They've had really nice major league careers, but for whatever reason, since they've been on the Nationals, they've been 900 plus OPS hitters. So you see as Drupal Cabrera and uh, Howie Kendrick, but they've been playing at like a Giancarlo Stanton level for the past year and a half for this team for whatever reason. So, um, I, I mean, if you leave one out there, I mean, Ass Crabs went apo taco like easy yesterday. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to put at bats together. And, man, I, I don't know. Their bullpen looked pretty solid. They still haven't used their good guys. We still haven't used our good guys. So I think that's, that's going to be interesting if it's a close game today because I think, you know, those dudes are going to be out there today. Yeah, what do you think? The, do you have a what to watch for? 
God, what to watch? Let's PPP at first. I right. think uh, – Pitching path to victory? To victory with the P in front of it. Johnny Luizaga, my guy, Johnny Els. Um, you know, I think we can't be expecting more than three innings. Um, Dude, even if, he, if he, even if he looks really good, I wouldn't let him go through the lineup twice. I think they made that mistake with King yesterday. Um, I think, I mean, Johnny Els has a little more experience than King. I think if he's looking good, you know, you can get 50, 60 pitches or something like that. We'll, we'll see what he looks like. But, you know, they, Chad has been a part of this plan. Um, so also first sign of emergency, Chad Green should be ready. And I think you could get two out of him, especially to start the season. So then you're starting to get into the fifth inning. And again, we haven't used our good bullpen guy. So, uh, I think, I, I think that's the plan as of now. I think there's still a little bit of a gap. Um, yeah. Cause he, even, yep. even if you go three, three with Johnny and two with Chad, you're to the fifth. I know. So, I don't know what they plan on doing. Um, like, if you work it backwards, Britain 9, Otto 8, Canely 7, you need six innings out of people. And, like, they may they may try and get funky with one inning with, like, a mix and match of, like, who, you, Hale and Krisky, Nick Nelson. Like, but you can't have a one-out pitcher. So, very confused in how they're going to try and – if it's a close game, what are they going to – Or you know what it might be, Jim. You might – you might have one of those other guys, a Holder, a Hale, a Krisky, a Nelson, finish the inning. Like if, if they need to pull Johnny L's out, because then you don't need to go the three batters. So start the next inning. And not- yeah. So I think that. That's a great idea, but it's still such a weird plan because Avalon, Hale, and Holder all pitched yesterday. Yeah. They so can use them again, but you're not excited to use them in a close game and that's what they may have to do here because because to be honest i don't think lasagna and chad are going to make up five innings yeah yeah i mean we'll see i mean they're i hope they're it's corbin on the other side so yeah it's i mean it's early they're you know chad should be stretched stretched out and we believe in chad and i mean like you're saying i i mean the goal for johnny ells is to get through the lineup once his stuff is still crazy you know, focus on that, and then if he looks good, give him a little extra. But yeah, no, it's there's definitely a scary the the fourth, fifth, sixth innings, but before they get to the big dudes, is going to be going to be a little interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, I like your idea to circumnavigate the the you can't do one out, get the last out, then you can get the first two. But still, there's a gap that I'm going to yeah how they feel. I have no idea. So that's that. Uh, what's your what to watch for? My what to watch for, man. God, it's a lot of moving parts today. Um, uh, it's got to be. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's actually no what? No, it's it's Talkman. I think Anduhar's the layup, and and maybe I should have gone with it, but. Mikey T, dude, uh, defensively graded as one of the best outfielders in baseball. Like, not a joke, not a Yankees fan. Like, defensive analytics graded out incredibly. He was incredible versus lefties last year. I think he hit, like, 330 or something. And, you know, everyone's excited for Ta- or for Andujar, and he's playing left field, and he hasn't been out there before. That's on Talkman's radar today, too. Um, I, I don't know. Mikey T, I was on him during the off season a lot, especially when <laughs> Hicks, Stanton, and Judge were hurt. I thought he'd be able to put it together for a season. Talkman's been nothing for good for us ever since those like first 10 games he played where he looked completely lost. So um, I'm in on the Mikey T show. Let, let's see what Big Mike has at the bottom of the lineup. All right. And who are the layup? I was going to avoid him as well because – it is the easiest what to watch for, but I feel like we – I don't want to take it, but we should mention, obviously, watch Anduar. And right. Team. Big thing to watch out for. I got Voight, man. Voight's 0 for 6 with a walk, and the walk, he did spit on a pitch nicely in game one. But yesterday, I mean, he he had a batless at bat. He just yeah. looked at three pitches down the middle, and he's got to be – mad at himself and you know they switched pitchers on him real late fetty maybe they didn't prepare maybe the percentages were off and he i don't i don't know 
but Voight can't go down looking again. Okay. And he will because that's what he always does, and then he'll right. – good numbers eventually it's part of his game plan that's why his on base percentage is always so good but man to look at strike one look at strike two and then look at strike three and then walk away from that bat that's like me freshman year of high school and i was bad sure um and the babip gods kind of were against us yesterday like i, I think voight Target balls, yeah. Voight, Voight had one liner that was, like, right at the center fielder. There was that one inning against one of the relievers that it was just three outfield bullets, and it was like, that's uh, that's baseball Susan a little bit. But, yeah, and especially, dude, we laugh and we keep saying, like, I wonder if he's even going to be on the roster. <laughs> like, all Mike Ford does is hit. It's, it's stupid to a degree to the fact that you're right. If Voider doesn't, like, you know, show something – People are going to say, hey, if there's a right-handed pitcher on the mound, why not give Ford a shot? And shit like that is how guys get replaced. At least make it a platoon. Um, yeah, man, so Voight, just don't go down swinging. Please. Or, or go down swinging. Don't go down. Just... Looks quick, though. Slim Voight. Looks quick. He runs in quick. That's unbelievable. Like, I've tried I'll – say, I'll save it for the podcast. Yeah, there's a lot of conversations at the chat. Save for the podcast we'll be having on the full podcast. This is just the pregame show. Uh, so you got Voight. I got Voight. You got Talkman. And obviously, Andy Harden left is a what to watch for. Yeah. Iggy is season debut. Um, that's about it. Let's move on to home. Homer draft. It's the Homer draft. draft. No one got on the board yesterday. So you go mm-hmm. one to nothing. And I believe you have the first pick, Jake. First pick, huh? Um, okay. So I've taken the big guys. I think you have the first pick, right? Yeah, because opening night you got you I you had to take Gary default first pick. That was the rule. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um my first pick is going to be uh I'm being strategic here because sure. you cannot choose Glaber, Gary Sander, Judge. Right. I want one of those guys, but it would be a waste <laughs> first. So I am taking DJ LeMayhew. Okay. Looked good yesterday. Has four home runs off Patrick Corbin in his career. A 375 batting average off Corbin in 52 plate appearances. So we're not talking that small. Mm. Size. DJ LeMayhew has crushed Patrick Corbin. 18 hits and 48 at bats. Three triples. And four home runs. Wow. One dot. 162 OPS. So I am taking DJ LeMayu with my first pick in the homer draft. Wow. Coors, Coors and Chase Field in Arizona. Good good triple venues. Um, okay. I like it. Um, I think I, I'm going to take Voight. Um, you know, we, in a weird way, we haven't been impressed with him in the summer camp and now but he's been seeing pitches and he still has hit some hard balls he's a big boy he saw he saw ford get that hit late yesterday so he's like okay oh i yeah. got it and i i already just told him the whole don't go out strike. sure so he's gonna sure just- sure sure um this is really tricky because anduhar's the sexy pick um geo's the cute pick as always and higgy's my guy and I could see I could see Corbin kind of sleeping on Higgy today. Like Higgy's kind of the breather in the lineup today. A little first pitch, get me over here. Um, you know what? Give me uh give me Geo the God. Wow. Um, Did Geo look yeah. good? I like Gimme give, give me Geo the God. He uh he still does it. He's still he's still barreling balls. He slides up in the lineup so he gets a couple more power swings in. Geo. All right. I like that. With my final pick, I'm taking Stanton. I mean, he's got a homer in the first game. Yeah. Homer in the first game. He's available for me to take. If I don't take him and he homers three games in a row, I mean, that's a whole bunch of uh, poop on my face. So yeah. it's almost like force my hand. I have to take yeah. Stanton. That's, yeah, that's tough. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so I have Stanton and DJ. You have Voight and Geo who look very similar now, which is cool. 
Yeah, similar builds. Every time he comes up, I think, damn, Geo's up. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's Voight. I'm trying to find the over-under. I, I can't find it. Okay, what do we think it is? We got Corbin we like. Yankees. It's nine and a half again. Yeah, nine and a half for nine. We both got the over correct yesterday. In an unfortunate way, yes. I went to ESPN, and it's like, you have to subscribe to find the over-under. I don't even get it. Bovada have it. Dude, I shrunk noodle last night. Did you see that? (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, all right. Um, Seven and a half. No, 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 no. What the fuck? Bovada just has today. Seeing a nine and a half in the chat. Seems like it's nine and a half. Why can't, why is it so hard to find these days? Go nine and a half. Jim, I'm. You got your Twitter up? A, a few people have said pass and said Clint to the Brewers, but I, I'm assuming they're yanking our chain, but. Um, yeah, pass and didn't tweet yet today. Okay. So, chat's a bunch of jerk holes. We would know that. We would know that. Let's go nine and a half. Pissing me off that we can't find it. I'm going sneaky under. Neither team has used their good bullpen yet, so it's just going to be in, like, the first five innings today. And Corbin's good. I've been a Johnny L's guy. We're huge Chad guys. I think it's an under day. Poor, poor first day game after a night game. So maybe the batters are a little more sluggish. Shaft mm. to play. Those are some theories. Theories. Um, but I'm 2-0 and oh in the over-under so far. So, like, I got to take it seriously. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. So, uh, let me just – nine and a half. I'm going to take the under as well. Okay. Good pick. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it. You got anything from the chat? Any real questions? I know you got a lot of – there's a lot of, uh, like, big topic questions that didn't pertain to today's game. Jake and I will be in the office. Um, I'm leaving as soon as we end this, basically. And yeah. we're recording tonight after the game, and we'll be talking about all that stuff. Um, you think they'd give Stan the MVP at DH? If the season ended right now, maybe. Sure. DD's looking pretty good, too. Listed Guardy at 5'11", yeah. Uh, Higgy's in the lineup because it's a day game after a night game. Catchers never catch both of those in a row since like, the beginning. Unless your name's Yadi or Molina. Yeah, maybe, maybe if Gary had looked good, they could have potentially DH'd him or something, but it's but, an okay yeah. off day. Yeah, but still, yeah. Just, catchers don't do that. Uh Voight versus Ford in a 60-yard dash. Who are you taking? That's a great question. It's a good question. I mean, out of just what's gone down, I take 40. It, it's just like big guys normally have that, like, hustle slash extra shake going on. Like, it looks like they're putting in more work because they're big guys. I just don't know, man. I, I've i tried to trick myself to know where Void is when he's running, and I'm always three paces behind. Ahead. Like, he – just he, don't know. Three paces behind. Like, he beat out a double play yesterday, and a couple people were like, hey, Slim Void, huh? I was like, no, that was a chopper. They shouldn't have even made the throw. Like, Castro was shocked. But, again, that's that's for Talking Yanks podcast. <laughs> he runs like he's in quicksand. Quicksand. Did Guardy just forget how to catch a pop up? I mean, if he caught that, we would be celebrating it as a fantastic play. Yeah. You can't get mad at him for dropping it. I do think that six out of ten times he makes that catch. Yeah. He makes great catches like that. He's very good at defense. But same with the judge one. Like you can't call it a routine pop up. You're kind of outing yourself as a jack wagon by saying. 
Zero out of ten times, Anduhar catches that. So, um, yeah, man, and that's a that should have been probably my what to watch for, but I I froze up because of the two dogs today. Um, is if they're just clean today because they were sloppy, and you know we have sloppy series in the past where you just walk away and you're like, whoa, that was sloppy. Let's change it. Like this year, kind of not time to be sloppy. No sloppiness, please. No slop. All right, I gotta organize some files on my hard drive and then i'm heading to the office i'll see you there i'll see you there go go yankees wear that outfit go yankees i'm gonna dude i was waiting for the lineup i was gonna shoot some hoops quick to like work up a sweat and shower but now i don't know if i have time i was waiting for the lineup i was gonna shower after this but i they were taking brutal hour beforehand sunday lineups goodbye bye everyone